by special recording, The Lone Ranger. With the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you silly? Captain Rogers of the Texas Rangers looked up as a young stranger entered his office at headquarters in Austin. Well, young man, what can I do for you? You're Captain Rogers? That's right. Who are you? My name is Bert Ackley, Captain. Bert Ackley. What? You're Jed Ackley's son? Yes, sir. Well, this is a surprise. I heard you were in California. I was, until I learned of Dad's death, Captain. I arrived in Austin by stage this morning. Sit down, Bert. Needless to say, I'm glad to meet you. Thanks, Captain. Your father was one of our best men. It was a shock to all of us here when he was killed two months ago. Well, what are your plans now that you're here? To find the men who are responsible for Dad's murder. Mm, that's a big job. The letter I received said he was ambushed by an hombre named Wendy Burton and his gang. That's what we believe. Wendy Burton is a notorious gunman and has three tough men riding with him. My Texas Rangers and other lawmen, for that matter, have been unsuccessful in tracking them down. Are they still in this territory, sir? Last report on Wendy's gang came from up Pecos Way. Captain... I want to join the Texas Rangers. I'd be mighty happy to have the son of one of our finest men on the force, Bert. But, uh... But what, sir? Bert, you came here to Texas bent upon revenge. Right now, you're filled with bitterness and with a desire to... shoot on sight the man who killed your father. Why not? Wendy Burton is a murderer. He deserves to die. I agree he deserves to die. But only after due process of law, Bert... If you found him and shot him, you too would be a murderer in the eyes of the law. No, Bert, I can't permit the use of a Texas Ranger badge for the purpose of legalizing a killing. It's a badge of honor, not a shield to cover a revengeful killing. Then I'm not eligible to join the force, is that it? Not under the circumstances. But if by chance you found Wendy got the proof against him and turned him over to the law for punishment, well, then I'd know you had the makings of a good Texas Ranger. With us, the law comes first, regardless of personal feelings. I understand, sir. Thank you for talking to me. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye, and good luck. After acquiring a horse, Bert started for the Pecos Territory. He was more determined than ever to find Windy Burton. But as he rode day after day, he did a lot of thinking. Captain Rogers' words had taken root. And finally, Bert decided to suppress his desire for revenge and to find a way to earn the badge of a Texas Ranger. Reckon the best thing to do would be to try to join Burton's gang and get evidence like the captain said. Now I have to figure out just how to go about it. Get up there. Come on. Bert stopped at cafes in several towns as he journeyed toward Pecos, leading the impression that he might be an outlaw and that he more or less admired Wendy Burton. 
As he left the last town, ten miles from Pecos, he noticed someone following him on the trail. Oh, who the who? A moment later, a rider moved up beside him. Oh, oh. Buenos dias, senor. Howdy, mister. You're riding the Pegasus, no? Maybe I am. What's it to you? Well, I was in the cafe, amigo. I overheard what you were saying there. Eh? Well? I, uh, I'm not with the law, senor, if that's what you think. <laughs> I'm not afraid of lawmen, mister. Mm, but you do not like them, huh? Maybe not. An hombre who is friendly to the law would not speak well of such a one as Windy Burton, senor. Listen, this is a free country and I say what I please. If I think Windy Burton is smart and might be a man worth knowing, that's my business. <laughs> so that's what you think, eh? Bueno, it would be good for you to meet him, perhaps. That'd be all right with me, mister. Maybe I could learn a lot from Windy Burton. I think such a meeting could be arranged, senor. You mean you know Windy? Say, si, senor. Say, I'm glad to meet you. I'm handy with a gun. If you think Windy might be willing to, well, take on another hombre to ride with the gang. Perhaps if I knew more about you, senor. Well, I come from California. You can call me Frisco. I sort of had to leave there in a hurry, you might say. <laughs> of course, Frisco. I am Carlos Marino, and I ride with Windy Burton. Mighty glad to meet you, Carlos. You uh, really think you can fix it for me to meet Windy? See, si, I will tell Windy about you. Then I will meet you in La Belle Cafe at Pecos tonight and take you to see him. I shall go back now. Adios, senor. So long, Carlos. <laughs> Come on, get him. Meantime, in the hills near Pecos, the Lone Ranger and Tonto drew rein in a stand of cottonwoods where they planned to camp. Oh, oh, the last reports of Windy Burton and his gang came from this territory, Toto. Ah. You let Marshall and Pecos know you get letter? Come here, Kimasabi? No, not yet, Toto. He might unintentionally let it be known that we're here, and Burton might hear of it. Ah. And what we do? I'll remove my mask and disguise my features. Tonight we're going to town and try to get news of the Burton gang. If we're fortunate enough to locate the gang's hideout, then we'll notify the marshal. That evening, the Lone Ranger, in disguise, entered the LaBelle Cafe. Tonto waited in the shadows between the buildings with the horses. Easy, Scum. Easy, bro. A short time later, two men left the cafe and walked to the hitch rack. Tonto moved silently through the shadows and stood near the corner of the building to observe them. One of them was saying, I reckon I owe you thanks, Carlos, for arranging this meeting. It is not just a meeting, Amigo. You will have to stay once you get there. We couldn't let you leave until you prove yourself. That's all right with me. Let's go. Si. <laughs> Otto's alert mind caught the implication of Carlos's remark. Mm. You take young fellow to some secret place. Me tell Lone Ranger. Tonto went quickly to the door of the cafe and signaled the Lone Ranger, who joined him a moment later. What is it? Well, well me see young fellow and him talk. Briefly, Tonto told what he had heard. The Lone Ranger said, Ooh. Well, the heavyset Mexican said the young man would have to stay wherever they were going until he proved himself, huh? Not right. I'm curious to know where they're going, Tonto. Let's get the horses and follow them. By the light of a bright moon... Bert and Carlos rode into the hills. When they reached a branch trail leading up a wooded hill, Carlos drew rein. Oh, 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 oh. Why are we stopping? You shall soon find out, amigo. Now listen. Someone answered your signal. Well, of course. If anybody should ride up this side trail without giving the signal, he would be shot before he reached the top of the hill. One well, of the gang is always on guard. Gente, get him. Uh, 
As he rode from town with Tonto to follow Bert and Carlos, the Lone Ranger put on his mask over his disguise. Later, the two men reached the side trail and pulled to a stop. Oh, easy. Oh, Crack show men stop here, Kimasabi. Then go up side trail through woods. All right, we'll follow the side trail and see where it leads us. Let's go. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Now to continue. The Lone Ranger and his Indian companion Tonto had stopped a moment on the main trail where it was joined by a side trail that led up a short wooded hill. Then they turned onto the side trail. Behind a large boulder near the top of the hill, a man saw them and made a quick decision. The masked man and an engine down there on the trail. Holy mackerel. The Lone Ranger and his pal. The boss will want to handle this. I better go tell him and the gang. Keeping to the shadows, he ran over the top of the hill to a waiting horse. Come on, get up there. Get up. Meantime, Carlos and Bert had entered a shack in a nearby hollow, where after preliminary greetings, Bert was being questioned by Wendy Burton, as Carlos and two other men listened with interest. Carlos said you left the coast in a hurry. So I take it that means you got in trouble with the law out there. I reckon you won't hold that against me, Wendy. <laughs> you know, I think we're going to get along, Frisco. <laughs> But, of course, you got to prove yourself for you really trust him. Uh, hey, that's Al. Something must be wrong. What's up, Al? Wendy! A couple of riders are heading for the hideout. I saw them real clear when they stopped down on the trail a minute, just before they took the side trail. Well, why don't you wait and use your gun? I told you I could see real clear. One is riding a big white horse and had a mask on. Right. The other's an engine. The same two who busted up the old gang, Wendy. Jumping catfish, the lone ranger and his friend. Yeah, lone ranger. That is not good. What do we do, Wendy? We must act fast. Now, listen, Carlos. You sit here at the table across from the new man, Frisco, and deal some cards. Act natural. But watch Frisco. He hasn't proved himself yet. Say, I will watch him. But what happens, Wendy? What then? Al, Pete, and I'll go out and hide our horses. Then we'll wait till those two come in here. They likely trailed you from town, Carlos. They'll think you two are alone. We'll get the drop on them. All right, let's go, men. Right, with you. A short time later, the Lone Ranger and Tonto approached the hollow and stopped on a slope among the trees. Look, Tonto, the shack down there. Wait here. I'll go through the brush and find out who's inside. Ah. Leaving Tonto on the slope, the Lone Ranger made his way through the shadows to the rear window of the shack. He crouched under the window and looked inside. Mm, only two men. A Mexican and a young man. The two we followed. Perhaps... Freeze, mister! Oh. Two of us have guns on you. Now reach! All right. Take your guns, Al, but be careful. I'm covering you. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Now, masked men, we're going inside. Get moving. Oh, you have captured the masked man, Wendy. Wendy Burton, huh? Right. The Indian Wendy, what about him? He's waiting out in the shadows for him to show up. Hmm. Sit down, masked men. All right. What now? Carlos, you and Al tie him to that chair while I keep him covered. With right. pleasure. The two outlaws tied the Lone Ranger to the chair while Wendy held a gun. Bert Ackley sat watching but said nothing. Then Wendy spoke. This mask, man, is very dangerous to us, Frisco. What do you intend to do with him? We wait till we find out about the engine. Then I'll get rid of both. Hey, you! Hey, that was Pete. Now go see what happened. You and Al. Hey, Pete. Hey, Pete, where are you? Watch for that doggone redskin. What happened? I was waiting for him to appear. Suddenly he grabbed me from behind. I just had time to yell out, then he knocked me down and beat it. Reckon he knew my yell would bring help. We'll go back inside and tell Wendy. Yeah. What's the matter? The Indian jumped Pete and beat it. Well, he won't go far. He's not going to leave his masked man friend in trouble here. What will we do? We'll leave you and Frisco to guard the masked man. Pete, Al, and I will go outside and search for the engine. Now, come on. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Yeah. 
Tonto had caught a glimpse of the Lone Ranger tied to the chair inside the shack just before he jumped Pete. The Indian had hoped to prevent the man from crying out, but hadn't succeeded. He realized the Lone Ranger was in grave danger and decided he could do nothing alone against so many. He ran to his horse scout, quickly mounting, headed for town to get help. Get him up, scout. Later, while Windy, Pete, and Al spent considerable time hunting Tonto, Carlos sat near the table in the shack with Bert guarding the Lone Ranger. The Mexican pointed to the masked man's guns on the table. Look at those fancy guns, Frisco. After the masked man is uh, out of the way, Windy will carry those. You mean Windy intends to kill him? Of course. One more murder means little to this gang of cutthroats. That is very true, amigo. Why do you want to kill this masked man, Carlos? He works with the law, Frisco. Didn't you hear Windy say he was the Lone Ranger? Oh, yeah. I've heard of him. <laughs> I reckon he wouldn't be the first lawman the gang killed, huh, Carlos? That is right, Frisco. Now that you are with us in the gang, you might as well know it, huh? Yeah. If you're caught with this gang, mister, you'll hang with them. From what I've learned, you just met them tonight. You'll learn much, amigo. <laughs> Carlos, if I hang with all of you, uh, I ought to know who was killed. Oh, you are the cool one. I suppose the masked man knows about the Sheriff Allen in Laredo, and perhaps about the Texas Ranger Ackley. I suspected. I'm glad to hear you admit those killings. When his father's name was mentioned, Bert tensed. Then, stretching casually, he stood up. You won't live to tell anybody, mister. Think I'll get a drink of water. Bert walked nonchalantly behind Carlos. Then, drawing quickly, he brought the butt of his gun down on the Mexican's head. That'll do it. What is this? I'll untie you. I'm Bert Ackley. They killed my father. I joined the gang to get proof. No. There. I'll take my guns. Thanks, Bert. Now I understand. Now we'll see. Hello, sir. I reckon that he's... Reach you three. Hey, he's untying. He had his guns. Stop getting... Hold it. No! Let's get him, Pete. Right! Before Al and Pete could trigger their guns, the Lone Ranger and Bert fired. I'll keep them covered, Bert. Get their guns and tie them. Right. Hey, Bobby, you all right? Yes, fellow. Yeah, we heard the shoot as we came down the slope. Tonto came to town and said the gang had caught you. Yeah. We came on the devil. Yeah. Ready, it looks like you settled things about us. All right, time up, man. Yeah. This young man is the one who saved the day for me, Marshal. If it hadn't been for him, I might have been dead before you arrived. You mean he isn't one of the gang? He is one of us. No, he's the son of Jed Ackley, the Texas Ranger who was murdered by Wendy's gang. He joined the gang to get evidence. Holy smoke. My head is hurt bad. What happened? Carlos, you fool. That hombre you brought here was a spy. Huh? He knocked out and untied the masked man. Thanks to you, Carlos, I have the proof I want. The masked man and I both heard you admit the gang killed Sheriff Allen of Laredo and... Get a doctor. And my dad. By thunder, Wendy Burton, I ought to kill Easy, right Bert. Now. Easy. The law will take care of them. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. It was courageous of you to join the gang the way you did. I... I wanted to find Windy and kill him. But Captain Rogers talked me out of it. He said if I proved myself, I could join the Texas Rangers. Well, you have proved yourself, Bert. And I'm sure you wear the Texas Ranger badge with honor. Well, that's what the captain called it. The badge of honor. You'll make a fine lawman. If you intend to go to Austin, I'll and I'll go with you. I'd uh, like to recommend you personally to Captain Rogers. Say, that's fine, sir. Good. we we'll leave right now. Goodbye, Marshal. I'm sure you and your men will take care of Winnie and his gang. We sure will, mister. Adios. Sir. Adios. Let's go, Toto, Bert. Goodbye, Marshal. So long, Bert. Oh, and all the time I think we have found a good hombre to join the gang. Ah, I even think that hombre who called himself Frisco would be my friend. <laughs> a young hombre like that would be a doggone fool to have one of you killers for a friend. But he's darn lucky to have a friend like the Lone Ranger. <laughs> <laughs> 